To get started with GraphQL in .NET, we are gonna need a server-side library for that. So in our case, that would be GraphQL.NET. So if you go to their GitHub repository, you can actually see that this repository has over 3000 stars and it is also an actively maintained project from the GraphQL.NET community. So if you scroll down in this page, you can find the instructions on how to install the package from NuGet and you can also go to their documentation site to see how you can work with this library in real life. So if you go to their introduction section, you can find a simple hello world program which we are gonna use later in this video. So before we get started, uh, make sure you have the .NET SDK installed in your system. If you don't have it already, you can just go to their .NET site and download the SDK from here and install it in your system. After the installation process is finished, you can actually check and see if it is installed or not by typing in the terminal .NET dash dash version and it will throw you the version number of the SDK. So let me create a directory for our project. So I'm gonna go to my desktop and create a directory, let's say GraphQL console and I'm gonna go inside this directory. Now I'm gonna use the .NET command to create a new console application. So this would be .NET new console. And the console application was created successfully. Now I'm gonna add the NuGet package for GraphQL. So .NET add package and GraphQL. So we are pretty much done with the installation. Now I'm gonna open this code base in Visual Studio Code and go to their program.cs file. I don't need this main method anymore because I'm gonna copy and paste it from the documentation site. So let me copy this main method and paste it down right here. It will prompt me to import all the namespaces for this GraphQL types. So this would be GraphQL types. And for the execute method, I need GraphQL. Okay, let me walk through the code a little bit. So we have a query type and this query has a field of hello, which is returning a string. So when you execute this schema against a user defined query, which is in this case, hello, it will give you this field value of hello world. So you can just decapitalize it and say this is just simple hello in smaller letters. So that's it. Uh, it will write the JSON output in the console. So if I try to run this application now from this Visual Studio Code terminal, let's see what happens. So as you can see, we have a simple hello field with the value of hello world. Similarly, we can add another field. Let's say for example, I want to add a number field and it will return an integer type data and from the user defined query i want to query for the number field also and of course i have to have a field with the value in the root type so this would be number and let me assign a value of one so if i query this application or should i say if i run this application you can see we have two fields with their respective values hello world and one Similarly, I can add another boolean field and list field and so on and so forth, but I'm not gonna go further with this simple hello world program because later in the video series, I'm going to create a ASP.NET Core application and add this library and make sure I can build a scalable API for you. So tune in my channel for those videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.